it on purpose. <laughs> I am surrounded by scientists, engineers, body hackers, artificial intelligence programmers, and those are just the kids. Hey, welcome to another Talking Tech with a Tech Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make technology simple. And I'm trying, I'm really trying, but making technology simple at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair is not so simple. Yes, these are kids from around the world who have come to exhibit their science projects. Not a solar system in sight, not a single volcano. This is all about body hacking, self-driving cars, artificial intelligence. It's all about robotics. It's all about chemistry on a molecular level and understanding chemotherapy. This is just really, really incredible stuff. Let's check out what these kids are up to. We are HDYS. How did you sleep? A home-based sleeping lab based on a flexible headband to monitor and treat your sleep. When a person complains about insomnia, the doctor sends him to sleep lab. However, sleep lab has many disadvantages. The test is done in an unfamiliar environment. The test is performed by many cables. The test is done in a predetermined time. The test is so expensive, up to $3,000 for one night. Inside it, we, can, we have EEG electrodes to measure the brain activity to detect insomnia and the sleep stages in real time. We also have EOG electrodes to measure the eye movement and to know whether the person is awake or dreaming. We also have pulse oximeter sensor to measure the level of oxygen in the blood to point out on any breathing issues or breathing breaks that might occur and cause insomnia. All the data is transferred via Bluetooth to an app we build where calculations are made and the results can be seen in the morning, so there is no need to wait weeks for the result to come. He can see all of the data transferring from the system to the app, and that's how he knows it works. Then he goes to sleep. When he wakes up in the morning, he clicks on overall results and can see what happens throughout the night. Our system classifies the sleep stages based on the brain activity. Also, identifies the types of insomnia the person may suffer from. Three, counts the breathing breaks and know at what time they have occurred. Four, calculates the sleep efficiency based on the time the person spent sleeping relative to the time he spent actually dreaming. Um, also, our system can predict awakening and in the future may also prevent it by using a new and innovative sound treatment technology. So we found in the literature by providing two different sound frequencies to each one of the ears, the brain subtracts between the two and, and syncs to the difference and thus letting us control the overall frequency of the brain and lower it to prevent awakening. Uh, hi, my name is Gaumu Shamanyani from Problems Dal, South Africa. So my project uh, focuses on developing an efficient pipe that can se separate usable and non-usable water. So in South Africa, we're currently experiencing a drought. For example, when you brush your teeth, and you don't close the tap, usually the water gets wasted. But what my project does is, it will be able to detect that you're wasting clean water and it will store the water in a reservoir. But however, if dirty water is passing through the pipes, it will, get, it will just pass through the drainage pipes. And mind you, if you save water, you don't only save water, but you also save money. So, because this is an invention for in the environment, a lot of people won't be able to, to invest in it. They'll just not be interested. So what I did was to implement an interactive user interface that will be able to show the person how much money and how many liters have been saved. Hi, I'm Stephen from South Africa. I go to school Bethlehem Poor Tracker High School in the Free State. Exploring the outer layers of an astronaut suit as well as the visor. I improved the astronaut suit to block more UV light than what it's currently doing. But also, by improving the uh, UV protectiveness by using one layer, we can reduce all the other layers of an astronaut suit to make it more compact and tighter, so it's more maneuverable for when we go to Mars. I've also increased the visor of an astronaut suit because astronauts have been known to have uh, uh, weakened eyesight when they come back to Earth. So I've decided to increase the UV protectiveness of the visor so that that doesn't happen by creating two chemical suspensions which are screwed on the inside and on the outside. 
for self-cleaning and anti-fog coating as well as UV protection. The human eyes, the skin, we are very like fragile so we need to be able to protect us and that is the future of the human race going out to space. Hi, my name is Pooja Jain. I'm with Westland High School. I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I'm here at ISAF. My project is extending emergency communication to the public from just a specialized personnel. Now, my project takes the regular public domain frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, or Wi-Fi, and extends it and builds a Wi-Fi mesh network so that people can connect their cell phone devices to it and enter a chat room. Well, this project is important because many people in disaster areas like hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, lack the infrastructure that is available for them to possibly communicate. They can't text, they can't call, cell phone towers are down, they can't access the internet because power lines are down. So what do they have left? They just have the radio wave frequencies. You can easily take parts from your own home, work with the rest of your community, and build a system that everybody can benefit from. Hi, my name is Kevin. I'm a 10th grader from Jasper High School of Plano, Texas. So I built a vehicle action prediction system with artificial intelligence that can essentially anticipate drivers' turns and lane changes before they actually make them. So kind of the impetus behind this project is that a lot of cars are now coming out with advanced driver assistance systems, you know, lane departure warning, forward collision warning. But the problem with these is that they're reactive. So by the time that they give you the beep, the warning that there's a car coming up at you and you need to get out of this disaster, it's often too late and we're not given enough time to react. So the purpose of my project was to improve this into a proactive system where the driver would, would be warned before he makes that decision to, that would get him in trouble. There are three types of important information. First, what the driver is doing, the driver behavior. Second, the vehicle dynamics, what the vehicle is doing. And third, how the driver is interacting with the vehicle, what kind of inputs he's giving it. So essentially, I use this that demarcates 68 landmark points on the driver's face. And then from this, I can extract the 3D position in space and extract things like the Euler angles and the uh, angular rotation. And I used a classification and regression tree to select the most important features to get rid of the noise. And so that eventually uh, achieved a better fit with a recurrent neural net. So finally, using all the clean, filtered, and labeled data, I used a recurrent neural network with long short-term memory to essentially model the, uh, the driver's patterns and you know, map these to predictions as to what they're going to be doing at the end of the sequence. If this were applied to traditional ADAS systems, I could save about 8,000 lives a year. You gotta admit, these kids are absolutely superb, flying to the US from all over the world just to exhibit at ICEF 2018. An Intel, fantastic job supporting these kids and essentially supporting our planet and ensuring that mankind has a future. Now, you can do your part by sharing this video with other kids to be inspired to join STEM and maybe we'll see them at the next ISEF 2019. Smash that subscribe button if you're new here, give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. Cheers for now.